Chris Ludig. I, I, by the way, I love what you've done here. We've got two coins. We're talking. Oh, we're doing. A, well, hang on. Hang on. Exactly. We're doing two up. Okay. Yep. We're doing statistics and probability, and we're doing two up. Now, here's a legal thing for you. Okay. Bet you didn't know this one. Two up is illegal except for one particular day of the year. Anzac Day. Anzac Day, you're allowed to play two up legally. Because. Because I have no idea why. Because it was popular during the First World War. So when the Anzacs come out to celebrate Anzac Day, we let them play the game they played in the war. That's right. And if you were going to get killed in the trenches, it didn't matter if you lost all your money, I suppose. Did it? <laughs> I think well, not funny. Well, the beauty of it as a form of gambling is all you need is two coins. You, you don't do. need a pack of cards, you don't need dice, but it's a game of chance. And in true Anzac Day tradition, we have got a New Zealand coin and an Australian coin. Yep. Okay, that's what the NZ stands for, New Zealand. Okay, and... You need a piece of wood to throw it up. I've nicked somebody's side of somebody's sliding lid box. Now, I'm going to try and, and explain what the things that can happen is. I throw a coin, and let's say that it could either land heads or tails. Can we call this coin one? This is coin one. can land heads or tails. And then I'm going to throw, and there's a second coin in the air. And so it can land either heads or tails, I guess. Yes? Yes. Yes. This is where I think I'm messing it up. So what could possibly happen out of these, these events is that I could have this, then this. Yep. So I can have heads and heads. I can also have this, then this. So that's heads and tails. Yes. Or it could be tails for the first coin, yep. and then heads, and then tails and tails. So there's my, f my four possible outcomes. That's right. These are the only four things that can happen. You can either get two heads, two tails, or a head and a tail. Or tail and a head. Yeah. Okay. But I guess what's interesting is you might say, well, this is just dumb luck. You know, there's just four things that can happen, you just pick one of them. However... It's not really dumb luck, because if we look at those as being our four possible outcomes, okay, a head and a head, the chances of that happening are one in four. So let's say, I'll write over here, head, can we see this on the camera? Right. Head and head, the chances of it happening are one in four. Sorry about my dodgy writing there, by the And to be even more particular, the probability, probability of head, head is one in four. Okay, now the probability of a tail and a tail is also one in four. That's this one over here, okay? So I'll cross that one out and I'll cross that one out because we put them up here. But here's the thing about it. The probability of a head and a tail, okay? We have to add to the probability of a tail and a head because we've got a tail and a head is the same as a head and a tail. We don't know which coin's which and they don't worry about that. So the probability of the two coins being different either a head and a tail, or a tail and a head, is actually one in four here, but also one in four here. Now we should know from our fractions that one in four plus one in four, quarter plus a quarter, actually equals a half. Or two in four is a half. Or two in four. You know what's really interesting too, and we, I don't think we've mentioned this yet, all our probabilities add up to one, or one hundred percent. Always have to. Because something's got to happen. There's a hundred percent probability of one of these outcomes. Let's play two up, shall we? All right. Okay. Now I'll collect data. I'll just give myself a little bit of space and see if this is true. So I'm collecting four. Hang on. Head and head. Head and tail and tail and tail. Okay. Head and the tail. Okay. One. Two tails. Two tails. Two tails. Two tails. Some more unusual data. Two tails. <laughs> Tell you what, guys, we've got to start gambling. There's something about the way we do this. Two tails. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do one more. We'll throw a bit high. Yeah, I was going to say, I think in the...
In the true Anzac spirit, I'm going to head over here, so that's good news. Now, in the true Anzac spirit, you are actually supposed to say something before you throw them up. Is that These true? are two heads. Mr. Thompson, do you remember what it is? Come in, spinner. Come in, spinner. And okay. see you later, all my money. So, uh, head and a tail. A head and a tail. Oh, I want to keep going. I want to do ten. So, head and a tail. So, we've got seven so far. I want to get the data sample. I'm not crazy about the data sample, but... And, and let's get them up there. And, there. and let's get some Anzac spirit. Oh, does that mean you're supplying the beer? Alright, oh, you, you've twisted my arm. Come on. He forgot to say come in spinner. We'll get him next time. Two heads. There you go. Alright. Come in spinner. Heads and tails. How many more we got to go before we get to Oh, ten? we got four, we got another three is seven, we got one to get Last to Last spin, come in spinner. Head in the tail. Okay, so what I want to talk about really, what's interesting here is that we haven't got the data that we expected. And I think it's for the same reason as last time. Why is it, Mr. Ludinic? Because we don't have a big enough sample piece. If it was so predictable that one in four spins would be a head in head, and one in four spins would be a tail and tail, and one in two spins would be a head and tail, the gambling would be easy. There would be no... There'd be no fun in it. There'd be no, not only no fun in it. No there, chance. No chance, okay? So the fact that it is a chance thing means that only over time should these things balance out to represent what we have predicted there. And in the moment, it might go a different way. Yeah, so the bloke who was taking his chance said, well, it's a one in four chance of getting a tail on a tail. I'm putting all my money on that because I might get a bigger return. Okay, he would have cleaned up. The bloke who said, well, I'm going to do the same thing, but go head and head, head, and head. He'd be broke, okay, and this bloke would pretty much be even. But he wouldn't have done as well as we'd expect. No, because you'd only get a 50% return, but that is getting a little bit more complicated. We'll leave that for another time. If I were the head and tail person, I'd be waiting because I expect that it would still come back to being half of the spins. Yeah, but you never know how long until it's going to even out and you might run out of money. Yeah, I'd probably be broke by then. <laughs> yeah, and that's the trick, isn't it? It's being prepared to stay the long game and, and losing all your money. Yeah. The other thing that I think is really, that we'll touch on this, is that this is an unusual result. And, and like we would expect, because of the data side, we, we got um, an atypical sample. I'd say so, but I'd be looking for some more data. I think over maybe 100 spins you really need to get. And maybe that, that, so that's what we're that gonna do. what we'll do is 100 we'll spins. Get the students, pair up with another student, two coins, 10 spins each, okay? And let's see if we can get a big data sample to see whether it actually balances out to what we think it really should be doing. I'm gonna make a prediction. I'm going to say it's going to be pretty close to that once we get all the class, all the students' results together and collate them in a table. I'm going to predict we're going to be within 5% of those results for each. Okay. Done?